Consider these five things about oil warning lights in your vehicle. There's a difference between the oil warning light and oil change reminder. Low oil pressure. Low oil level. Engine oil pump is not working. Don't drive your vehicle with low oil pressure. The oil warning light however, is another matter entirely. This light typically looks something like a genie lamp with a drop coming out of the end, but sometimes it may just be a red light that says oil. In fact, any red warning light is an indication that your vehicle is at risk of serious damage. In this case, the light is telling you that the engine oil pressure has dropped to dangerously low levels. Running the engine with low oil pressure can quickly destroy it. 5. There's a difference between the oil warning light and oil change reminder. If your car or other vehicle is equipped with some manner of maintenance reminder, you may have seen a light or message come on to tell you that it's time to change the oil. These reminders come in a variety of looks, but they're all self-explanatory when you see them. When you see this light, the best thing to do is make an appointment with your local authorized service center. They'll take care of the maintenance that's due and reset the oil change light. 4. Low Oil Pressure If the low oil pressure warning light is on in your ride, the best thing you can do is shut the engine off and not drive the vehicle until the matter is resolved. We understand that this can be awfully inconvenient, but it's better than needing a new engine. Fortunately, the oil pressure light often comes on when the sensor goes bad. Fixing a bad sensor is generally quick, easy, and affordable. 3. Low Oil Level one of the most obvious reasons for engine oil pressure to be low is that the amount of oil in the engine is too low. To avoid this, check the engine oil regularly by parking on a level spot, letting the engine cool down, and checking the oil dipstick. It likely has a yellow loop or handle. When you pull the dipstick out the first time, wipe it off and reinsert it all the way. Then pull it out again to determine the accurate level of oil in your engine. If it's too low, make sure you fill it with the recommended type of engine oil as stated in the owner's manual or on the oil fill cap on the engine. 2. Engine oil pump is not working. If the level of oil in your engine is fine and the sensor is working the way it should, the most likely reason for low oil pressure is the oil pump. This is located at the bottom of the engine inside the oil pan, and replacing it can be a big job. We don't see this problem too often, but if you do need a new oil pump, it's easier and more affordable to replace it than an engine that's been destroyed because it didn't have any oil pressure. 1. Don't drive your vehicle with low oil pressure. We mentioned this above, but it's important enough to earn the number one spot in this list. That's because low oil pressure doesn't have to ruin an engine, but it will if you keep driving the vehicle without enough oil pressure. The light is your first and most important warning. If you wait until the engine starts making new and disturbing noises, it's likely already too late. So, if your oil pressure light comes on, turn off the engine and address the problem right away. It may simply be a matter of adding some oil and finding out why the level got low in the first place, or it may be something more involved like replacing the oil pump. I will now show you this video to help you know when to change the engine oil, and how to check the correct engine oil level. With most cars, changing the oil on your vehicle is an imperative. Most VW and Audi models have a 10,000 mile interval, and most enthusiasts change their oil around every 5,000. On most current VW and Audi models, you're going to have going to be a service or maintenance interval light, and the other one is going to be, a, it's going to notify you every 10,000 miles that you're supposed to change your oil. The other light you're going to see is going to be an oil pressure light or a check oil light. This is going to look like the genie from Aladdin's lamp, and it doesn't grant any wishes. It's noise and something that tells you to stop engine. If, if it's not measuring on the stick at all, it means you're very low. If it isn't measuring on the stick, you will want to verify you haven't hit something and your oil panner isn't busted underneath and all the oil is falling out of the bottom of the engine. If you check it and there is oil there and you still have a light flashing, you are going to want to turn on the circumstances. Once they check the oil and realize it's there, they then assume that maybe they have beeping and flashing means is that the engine either has no or insufficient oil prep and car systems, then service and checks and go down to oil level. And there you can see, there's oil level, min max. This car has a three liter supercharged engine and while it did not originally come with this dipstick, you can retrofit one because some OEM vehicles use the same dipstick. Most cars, and clean this off completely. The reason why you're doing this is because as you run your vehicle or drive your vehicle, the oil is gonna move around some and so to get an accurate. Now we're gonna insert our dipstick back into our dipstick hole. 
Now we go all the way down, and you are going to want to make sure you insert it all the way to the end so you bottom that thing out. Now if the car tells you to go deeper at this point, you say, that's all I got. Reading your dipstick is pretty simple once you get the hang of it. What you're looking to do is ensure you get the hash marks of your oil between the high and low mark on your dipstick. Keep in mind when measuring your oil at hot and cold temperatures, the density of the oil is going to be different, so you're going to read different levels of your oil. Reading oil that's dirty is going to be easier, as you can't see through it. Fresh oil is going to be clear, which means you're going to see through it. And generally what you're going to use is the reflection of the fluid on the dipstick to determine your oil level. So what oftentimes you'll need to do is move the dipstick around to actually get the reflection from different angles. If you're ever unsure about the measurement of this, your best thing to do is to look at it, clean it off completely, put it back in, and then check it again. And what you're looking for is to compare the way it was before to the way it is now to determine exactly your oil level. If you have a consent Audi engines that did have some problems with the two liter longitudinals in the Audi A4s and A5s and Q5s, found in the late 2000s to the early 2010, 2012 range, had some significant oil burning issues where you had to update the pistons to actually get rid of the issue. The key with your oil is gonna be that you don't run it too high or too low. If you run it too low, you risk damaging your Five symptoms of a bad oil pressure sensor slash switch in your car. One, oil pressure warning light. Two, check engine warning light. Three, hotter engine. Four, oil pressure light blinking. Five, bad oil pressure gauge reading. The oil pressure is what sustains the oil flow inside of your internal combustion engine. As you know, the engine is comprised of several moving components. Many of these components create friction because they rub against each other. This friction generates heat which must be cooled down. The benefit of engine oil is that it cools and lubricates these components to reduce the heat and keep them running smoothly. As long as the oil pressure does not diminish, the oil can continue to benefit the engine in this way. The amount of oil pressure in the engine is detected by the oil pressure sensor. Once the sensor has this information, the data gets sent to the engine control unit where it is calculated further. Based on the calculation, the unit will know how to properly regulate the oil flow in the engine. If more demand is placed on the engine because the driver steps on the accelerator, the oil pressure increases. All these components work together to make this possible. 5 Bad Symptoms When the oil pressure is lower than normal, it could mean there is a problem with the oil pressure sensor. The symptoms are not too serious in the beginning, but they can lead to more serious symptoms if you don't replace your oil pressure sensor early on. Therefore, take the symptoms seriously before it is too late. Below are the top 5 symptoms of a bad oil pressure sensor. 1. Oil Pressure Warning Light One of the first signs of trouble with your oil pressure sensor is when the oil pressure warning light comes on. In some vehicles, this is called the low oil warning light. Whenever this light stays on, it means there is either low oil, low oil pressure, or some other kind of oil problem in your engine. Often, it can be traced back to a faulty oil pressure sensor. Replace the sensor and your oil system should return to normal again. 2. Check Engine Warning Light The engine control unit monitors the oil pressure sensor. If the unit detects a problem with the sensor, it may respond by illuminating the check engine warning light on the dashboard. Anytime there is a problem which has an impact on the functionality of the engine, you can expect the check engine warning light to come on. You'll know this means that you have a bad oil pressure sensor if the oil pressure warning light is on at the same time as this one. 3. Hotter Engine Oil pressure needs to remain consistent to keep the engine cool. With a bad oil pressure sensor, the engine computer may not properly increase the oil pressure when it is desperately needed. As a result, the engine will start to get hotter because the oil pressure is too low. If this continues, the temperature gauge will show the engine temperature rising. 4. Oil Pressure Light Blinking Aside from the oil pressure light just turning on, you may see it blink repeatedly. It may also blink for a while, stop, and then go back to blinking again. Take this as an advanced warning that the oil pressure sensor is wearing out. You still have time to do something about it before your engine suffers serious damage. Take it to the mechanic and have them replace your oil pressure sensor. 5. Bad Oil Pressure Gauge Reading The instrument cluster of your dashboard has an oil pressure gauge, which is directly connected to the oil pressure sensor. The gauge tells the driver what the current oil pressure is. 
If you ever notice the oil pressure gauge indicating a strange pressure reading, then it definitely means your oil pressure sensor is bad. Either that or there is a possible oil leak somewhere in the system. Driving with a bad oil pressure sensor. Driving with a bad oil pressure sensor is extremely unwise. The key problem is that you won't know for sure your car's real oil level, and that could have some dangerous consequences. As we said before, oil is the lifeblood of your car's engine. Low oil pressure means the oil has less time to cool before it is reintroduced to the system to do its job of lubrication, cooling, cleaning and more. This will lead to the oil heating up and thus contributing to an engine overheating. Knowing this, we should realize that knowing our car's correct and proper level of oil pressure is an absolutely critical piece of knowledge for our car's health and our personal safety. A faulty sensor will give you false information at best inconveniencing you as you constantly pop your hood to check the oil levels, but at worst not telling you properly when levels are low and you doing significant damage to your engine. In short, driving with a bad oil pressure sensor is mean you put yourself and all of your passengers into an unsafe position. Replacing the oil pressure sensor is a fairly simple and inexpensive procedure that your mechanic is undoubtedly capable of quickly completing. If you know your way around an engine, you might even be able to do it yourself. In the end, what will happen if you leave the bad oil pressure sensor untouched is that much greater harm will come to your car's engine, and possibly even to yourself. Stay safe, and make sure your oil pressure sensor is working properly. I will now show you this video to help you how to change the oil pressure sensor. Right here, it is uh, code P0523 or where the sensor sits. Now this is the engine clearly, obviously it's a massive engine, it's a 5.3 liter V8 as you can see with active fuel management. So the sensor is right in here, right on the engine itself. And this engine being so hot in a so con uh, in such a small space, it tends to heat up. So for this job, you really don't need much. Uh, obviously you're gonna need your new oil pressure sensor, which is fine. So let's go over to the car and get this fixed. All right, so first things first, this is the uh, new oil pressure sensor that I have. Uh, this is where the connectors go. As you can see, it's a three prong um, and it already has the Teflon on it. So you can just screw it in there. You don't have to worry about um, putting in, you know, any uh, Teflon tape or anything like that or any sealant. Um, and it's very simple. All you got to do on the factory one, once you get it, um, just reach in here and unplug this thing. Okay. As you can see, it is now unplugged. That's this right here completely unplugged and you could probably see it in there i don't know if you can see it it's that thing right in there so now all you want to do is put this in there and unscrew it all right so there it is it has a lot of gunk which makes me think that you want to get your new um oil pressure sensor and basically just put it in there and thread it into place you want to hand tighten and do not i repeat do not want to torque it into place because if you torque it into place um, you run the risk of, you know, pretty much destroying your, your sensor. So hand tighten it. I always like to just grab the extension and the socket itself. And then just, there we go. And then just tighten it with my hand until it gets a little tough. And once it's hand tightened and it's not going anywhere, you can just back it out and then grab your wires again and then find the correct threading or the on the, the correct way that the plug goes in and then plug it in. It might be a little tough because of the wires. Okay, and it looks like it's in now, as you can see. It's 100% in, it looks good. All right, so you can see that the uh, temperature is now to normal operating temperature and the check engine light is usually right here, but as you can see, there's no light, so it's off. Uh, and I do have my scan tool connected and it's reading again but it doesn't look like there's anything popping up see it says no DTCs or freeze frame presently stored in the vehicle's computer so it looks everything like it's good now let's go over to the to the engine and see if there's any leaks all right so there it goes it's all holding so 